All right. So my name is Nathan Mertz. I'm a PhD student from the Norwegian Insti from the Norwegian University of Science and Technology. I'm here to talk to you uh, about some initial results we have from a collaborative project between the NTNU Task Force Salmon Lice and the Samana Division at the Norwegian Institute of uh, Nature Research. So we were interested in, based on some of the, the previous findings and, and comparisons of methods from many of our colleagues here at the conference, uh, looking at different lice quantification methods within plankton samples, we were interested in further exploring the capabilities of the DDPCR quantification method. And so we decided to conduct a controlled experiment at different densities of lice with two different species, Caligus elongatus and Lepiopter somanus. And in the two larval stages, Nopleii 2 and Copepodid. So to do this, we cultured lice at the NTNU Sea Lab, both, uh, both species, and we removed them at three days and seven days post-hatch in these two stages. Uh, we spiked them at levels of one to 30 individuals. And then the downstream analysis was done at the NTNU, or at the, the Nina Genetics Lab, and that was done using uh, the lysis of the cells using matrix beads, DNA extraction, and then the PCR amplification. So the results from Salmanis, we can see that as the number of spiked individuals increases, there's a pretty clear increase in the number of DNA copies detected as well. We did find that in a few of the sample replicates, we had issues, particularly with the copepodids on the far right of this left-hand graph. Um, but it's a very clear increase in the amount of lice and the number of DNA copies detected. As well, if you look on the right, you can see that the average number of copies of DNA per individual was quite clear between the two stages. And that was approximately 2.3 million copies uh, of this mitochondrial DNA marker. So looking at Caligus elongatus, it's much less clear. It was uh, less reliable in quantifying, especially at the higher densities within the copepodids, again, on the, on the right of that left-hand graph. And we are unsure whether or not this is the result of some problems with homogenization during the lysis step. Uh, or something related to energetics within the, that species and a decline in the number of mitochondrial DNA copies. Um, but we can see that there is a drastic difference in the number of DNA copies between the copepodites and the nopleii over all of the individuals that were sequenced. Um, so despite the uh, issues with the Caligus experiment, we think that the the method is viable for use with uh, Lepiopteris salmonis, and we're now rolling out some plankton collection devices in the fjords near Bergen, um, and we'll be collecting plankton samples over the next month alongside the NALO programs, salmon smolt cages, and the smolt trawl surveys that are happening. Um, and we're looking forward to um, using these plankton samples and quantifying the amount of Lepiopteris salmonis larvae within them and comparing that to the more traditional parasitism rates that are established through these uh, smolt collections. Um, so hopefully we have some, some nice results from this in sea lice 2024, um, and hopefully you, you can be there to uh, see us present this. So. Um, thank you to the collaborators at Nina and NTNU for all the help with culturing lice and uh, doing the sequencing. Um, and thank you to my supervisors, uh, Banked, uh, Frolda, and Rachel for your guidance in, in setting up the experiment and conducting it. Um, and thank you to you all for listening. So if you have any questions, uh, feel free to ask in the Q&A or afterwards. Thanks very much, Nathan.